the fan on. So we'll we'll wait a few more minutes. It's still a little. It's still one minute to eight, but um, before just to see if anybody else comes in. I know there were a few people who submitted images that we'll go through um, while we're waiting. If you guys want, we have a there's a contest on Photo Focus right now for. Um, oh, thank you. I was just about the to Spider X contest. <clears throat> There's Tammy. Hey, everybody. We're just waiting a few more minutes to see who else shows up. Let everybody get ready, get situated. Hi, Tammy. How are you? How are you? Good. How are you? Doing good. Hello. Hey, Ken. Hey, Ken. How are you? Oops. Um, I'm just going to give it another minute, you guys, before we get going. Okay. I'm just like trying to turn down my phone. Or... My phone is never even on. So I'm so bad you'll appreciate this, Ken. I, I got up at got up at two o'clock in the morning. Went, oh, look, the stars are firing for Milky Way and got up, got all my gear together, got out, got on location. <laughs> Wow, it's just enough <laughs> to cover all, you know, it's like, oh, you son of a gun. Oh, what? I'm sorry, what happened? You, you had clouds or something or? Yeah, when I was, I was all set for doing a Milky Way and it was, you know, technically new moon, good time. The, it looked like it was fine. I got everything together. I'm awake at two o'clock in the morning, gathering my gear, I go out. And was like, then I looked up when I got to the site and went, oh, I guess I'm going back to bed. I, I got a little bit hosed um, earlier this week because um, there were there were some nasty fires. Um, so yeah. That blotted, yeah, that blotted out the sky quite a bit, but I think I still got something. So that kept me from going out quite a bit. We've been we've had fires all the way around Sedona, so and we're and we're picking up the California smoke as well. So it hasn't been fun. Yeah, yeah, the whole West Coast is on fire. I think. Seems, all right. Seems so. All right, you guys, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and get started. Um, I think that, mm -hmm. I don't know, people might show up still a little bit, but they're, they're late. So tough. <laughs> um, no, I mean, um, you know, thank you guys for showing up at all. I appreciate it. Um, we're, this is what the second time that we've done this third time that we've done mm -hmm. this with the photo assist and trying to help people out and learn a few things along the way, instead of just talking about photography stuff, which I don't know. I'm, I think doing this is more helpful, hopefully, to everybody. Um, I mentioned before, too, there's a photo focus contest right now with Data Color, Spider X. Um, you can win a Create Kit. And I popped the link in the chat if you guys want to enter to win. And photo focus people, you're not allowed. I already asked. I was just going to ask. <laughs> I'm like, I knew the Come answer. But... No, I did too. I, but I asked anyway. <laughs> hey, you never know. So I'm just going to jump into this. Um, this first image, it, he's not on the call. And Anthony Burns. Um, where am I? Hold on. I got to share my screen. So I don't know. He didn't give me really any information on this. Not very much anyway. Um, I double checked to ask him what, what this was exactly or what he was trying to do. And he really didn't give me um, an answer that helped the situation so i really don't know what he wants help with i mean it's a it's an image of a uh, image of a photo in a tree kind of thing with a camera so i don't know what he was trying to do i don't know what he really wanted help with um you know if you guys have any comments feel free like i can say one thing like this line right here i would take out <laughs> Oh, yeah. you know, right away. That's my, that's my big, you know, I might straighten it. I, I don't know. Again, it depends on what he was trying to do. I, I'm not really sure if he was just taking a photo to see a, of a display, like at an art installation, or I, I don't know. 
I'm not sure. I mean, it's an interesting presentation of the right. of the photo right. for sure. Um, I, uh, I guess the first thing that strikes me is that it um, seems rather orange. It is a little. But um, I, again, um, I I don't know if he was just taking a photo of you know could have been an art fair or something maybe I, I don't know. Yeah, you know, the, the the camera appears to be uh, placed there very purposely. So right, right, which I like. I think that looks nice. It's kind of cool. It's a cool way to display an image. Right. Yeah. Something so. different. Yeah, I have I have a couple comments. Uh, just real quick, it, you know, if it's a if it's a image of <clears throat> the art piece sliding it over a little bit and allowing you know the full bike to be seen and and really yeah. catching that that um area going straight down that all that perspective gets kind of lost because it gets blocked off by Cut the off. tree mm -hmm. and then the other is that this uh, it, for my taste this is very underexposed and we've got a lot of areas that are um at least appearing this way as totally blocked up black so would probably would have needed a little more control of the capture. Right. That would be that would be my thought. Yeah. All right. Well, I again, I, if he were here, we could ask him some questions. It would be a little more helpful, I think, to be able to answer. Um, you know what he's looking for, but I, he also said he was just wanting to be a good sport and play along. So maybe he wasn't hoping for much. I don't know. <laughs> well, as they say, hey, thanks for playing, right? Tony. <laughs> There you go. Um, one more thing, I, I can't help yeah. but wonder whether he took um, uh, the the actual photo that's being displayed as well. I asked that question, and his he either didn't understand what I meant, or he thought I was talking about a different image. Oh, so okay. I, I'm not. It was all done by email, so it was mm. disjointed. Um, okay. Just curious. Yeah, Just, that's. I asked the same question, but it was again, it was a disjointed conversation over a couple of days. You know, like back and forth an email so it didn't didn't really didn't really go well okay so uh what do we got next next we have tammy so i know tammy personally and i know tammy was at this dog event right last weekend yeah right yeah and that you wanted to try to catch the action but it's not something that you do on a normal basis. Right. So I'm, I'm really struggling. It's a Fuji camera and I'm really struggling with it. And I, and I wanted to capture the dog. I wanted to stop the action and I played and fiddled around and I took tutorials and I just, I could not figure it out. Hmm. So if you, if you had your, you shoot Canon otherwise, right? Yes. So if you had your Canon, do you think, you know how to do this with your Canon. I do. Okay. Oh, interesting. Okay. So, so it's just the, it's just the, um, the sort of familiar the difference in, right. Yeah. It, yeah. It's getting familiar with how, how the Fuji works in a quick situation or just setting it up beforehand. I know you've been struggling with it, but I know you've been out practicing and trying to make it work. So, yeah. And so, I think I'm closer, but it's still, it's, it's not there, obviously. <laughs> that sort of makes me want to ask, um, like, how would you approach this if you had your Canon camera? Well, if I had my Canon, what would I do? I know that I'd be able to focus on the eyes. And I think the difference with the Fuji is that I'm not real sure it, it, the, it's the touch screen in the back. And I'm not sure, you know, if I, if I touch where I want to focus, is that where it's going to focus? Or is it, is it just focusing the entire thing? Mm. Um, Which Fuji okay. do you have, Tammy? It's the X-T20. 20. 20, okay. I'm a yeah. Fuji shooter and I went from Canon to Fuji and it's a, it's a learning curve. Okay. Um, I first thing I did is disable the touch screen in the back because every time I'd bring it up, my nose would touch it and change the focal point. <laughs> there, there's another tool you can use uh, to move that focus point around and then it doesn't jump on you. And you can okay. also set how big you want the, uh, the focus area to be from a single point to the whole screen. Uh, but it is, it's different than <clears throat> the Canon I was using quite a bit. But I so love it something now. like this, would you would you do 
Would you do a, a single focus point? I don't, I guess I'm, it's all blown up my screen pretty big right now. Where was the, the focus point you wanted was? On the dog. I, I, I was trying to, to capture his, at least his face. Right. Oh, okay. Yeah, um, yeah. But it's almost like there's a lag time too. You know, when I hit the shutter, it, it's, it's, it lags. Oh, okay. There shouldn't be a lag. Um, I would have focused it. I would have probably pre-focused it on that where it says doc dogs. Uh, I assume depending on what focal, what you were using, that would probably have the dog in focus. And then I would, I'd use back button uh, focus on that and just wait for the, the action. So you're not trying to, to do that at that time. <clears throat> Excuse me. Yeah, I would have also pre-focused this, although um, um, I might have like, um, focused manually and then just kept it frozen there. But um, I mean, that's probably what I would do rather than wait for the uh, camera to react to a leaping dog. Okay, maybe that's another part of my problem is that I don't know how to disengage the autofocus. Um, oh, okay. Yeah, it's, it's hard to know. I mean, because, you know, quite, if I'm being frank here, the, the entire, um, the, the entire yeah. image is out of focus. So, yeah. Um, so obviously, uh, yeah. So, so it's it's pretty clear that your camera, some, uh, or whatever you did with the camera, missed focus entirely. So oh, auto focus didn't work at all. Um, I, I I've got a, an idea, if I, a question for you, Tammy. Do um are your is your camera supported? Are you on a tripod or a monopod to hold the camera still? No. And I, what is Okay, so so number one, you're you're gonna get camera shaken in a situation like this. So number one, you're in deep do already without supporting the camera. Because overall the whole the whole thing is, is I see camera shake in there as well. So I I need to May I write it now? Interrupt you showed me how who's got who's got all the background noise going on? Can you uh, just mute everybody and we'll I'm come trying. back in? Yeah. Not yet, not yet. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. No, maybe I can't find it. Hold on, sorry. It's not, it's not showing me a whole mute all. Um, I know there is one. Maybe. Well, it's Pam Heimer, so just- I think it's on. Pam there. Okay, yeah. okay. There you go, there you go. Think, Thank you. Okay, yeah, that's better. Um, so I think she said she was not using a tripod or monopod, so this was handheld. Right. right, and it was it was ISO two hundred at fifty five mil f eighteen and one seventy fifth of a second. Yeah, that's going to be way slow for freezing. Yeah. And, you know, an yeah. animal running through the scene anyway. So, were you thought. shooting on what? What were you shooting on? Like auto or manual or AV or TV? Um, I I believe I was on AV. Okay. So, so if the idea is to try and get the dog in focus while it's moving like that, like you said, that shutter speed should probably be somewhere in the range of like one five hundredth of a second or something like that. So yeah. to, to, to do that, you, you the, the f eighteen is maybe part of the, the issue. There is maybe go like with an f. I don't know what lens you had there, but an f four or something with a wider aperture that will then let you and and maybe also push up the ISO a little bit. But get that that shutter speed is going to be the I think one of the big items there to, to get up. So lower that yeah. f stop <clears throat> and maybe push the ISO up a little bit. And yeah, and if you probably you're get not, it. if you're not sure about using the Fuji at first, you could put it in shutter priority and then let the camera do everything else. For, you know, for the time being until you know you got that, and then and then like Michael said, have the um, have the shutter speed at, at least one five hundredth, if not faster. Right. So, okay. Yeah. And if it's it was like a sunny day, I mean F eighteen is like uh, you know. Yeah, you don't sunny F eight is plenty. Yeah, I would agree. Okay. Cool. And that would help right. too. Thanks. Thanks for bringing that issue to us. That's fun to kind of 
taken well, apart. You know, and it's the start. thing, the thing I always, you know, people, I try to do this when I take my own, own images into places like for critiques or, or reviews or whatever is people tend to give you their best images and there's not a lot you can usually talk about. I mean, there is sometimes, <laughs> but it's like, we're trying to learn here. So giving you my best images <clears throat> isn't helping me or anybody else. Like, let me give you an image where I need help. Like, I know there's some issue. I know there's something wrong or that could be done better. You know, great. I love your good shots. I love your great images. I love the ones that are your best ones, but show me, and you know, we're here to help people and, you know, we can't help people get better if it's something that they're like already really good at and don't really need help with. So I purposely go into group critiques with like really bad shots, you know, like <laughs> we're here to learn. What can we learn yeah. from this? You know, or ones you have questions about, right. Or like what, you know, why is this or like this, you know, Tammy's learning a new mm. camera, you know, <laughs> and, and needs help with that part also. And it's yeah. interesting because it, it, as much as it, this happened to me when I, when I switched from film to digital, it's like, I didn't learn. I didn't, all of a sudden I forgot everything I ever learned. Right. Like it's the same concept. <laughs> It's a DSLR and an SLR. It's all kind of the same, but it's yeah. different because there's all these other buttons and there's this everything. And I was like, it overwhelmed me. And I was like, I shot on auto for, I don't know, a good year with that camera before I switched off of it. <laughs> Cause I just, yeah, I mean, did that, did, you, did that feel like we got you some ideas there to work with? Yeah, I, I think so. Good. Good. Thanks for the input. All right. So next we have David McCarty, who's on the call here with us. Cool. So, what do your what do you want to lo- know about this? Well, it, <clears throat> what I was trying to capture with this picture was this is uh, along the Missouri River, uh, the stone house that I'm shooting out of. It's built about 1950, so you know, there's a lot of age and weight to that. And yet you've got kind of the timeless river valley through the window. And I'm just, I'm not sure. I mean, I, I, I know what I wanted, but I haven't quite figured out how to develop it to make it, it really snap. Uh, it just seems like a picture that should be strong. And I, I've tried different cropping and other things. So I'm just interested in what other people would do with start, this as a starting point. I'd love to ask what you want. You said you weren't sure that this got got you where you wanted to go. I think it was. But I, I well, I just I think it could be a really really strong image. I, I like the picture framing. Uh, yeah. I don't know whether to uh, obviously there's a lot of separation. It's a very very bright um, river valley mm. and shot through a very dark uh, stone hut. Hmm. Uh, and I played around a little bit with changing the exposure to bring that up a little, but then I tend to lose the structure and uh, texture of the of the stones. Is it a is it a one it's shot good. image? It's just a one shot image. It's just a one shot image. Yeah, it looks like it. I think probably part of it is your time of day. Like I see what you're trying to do, and some of the rocks are in bright sun, and some are in shade right so right away that's already going to be hard to do that in one shot whereas if all the rocks were in shade you could kind of underexpose them a bit and have your scene set in the middle properly exposed Mm -hmm. i see where you're trying to go with it for sure and i see why it was hard for you with different levels of light on the rocks okay so so if you're starting if you're starting here and this is what you have to work with um the first thing you know if you want to really try and push this, I, I think there's one, you have an issue of being all that, um, your very foreground, your first window is out of focus. So yeah, that's going to jump really way forward. So maybe crop in a little bit and leave the, the out of focus ones out of there. Um, and then you right. can select that area that's in your frame and process that separately. Um, on its own layer and you can do that with uh, curves and some different things and there's you could if you've ever done luminosity masking um, that will allow you to select those things pretty easily and then just enhance what's in the window and then take the rocks and the the other part yeah that's better that's better 
um, and then take the other part and reprocess them in a different way on a separate layer or with separate um, adjustment layers. And then you can, you know, take your different elements and just process for them for each one. And I think you'd be surprised at what can happen. Okay. I think Bob, all, all of Bob's uh, suggestions are really good. The, the problem for me about this picture is that, that it's sort of a situation without a purpose. Um, you know, we're, we're, our eye is focused on basically the scene out here and there's nothing going on out there in the scene. And yet this is not really a picture of the texture of the rock or the really the relationship of this of this building. I mean, it has these wood beams and everything. There are really interesting things about this, but it doesn't really relate to the nature around it or anything like I said. So it, to me, it, seem, it seems like a great situation that really doesn't have something that you're trying to tell us with it. Good, good thoughts, Sandra, good thoughts. Um, so I don't know how um, technical you are, like as far as um, taking the photo, but if you wanted to retake the photo again, um, I don't know what, what you could do is get a little bit closer. So you're cropping out the right hand, I mean, not literally cropping the right hand side out, but, but you're eliminating it and getting closer to the window um, and then what I, uh, I might consider doing is um, focus stacking. So you'd focus on the rocks first, then focus on the, the rest of the scene outside the window, and then, and then put that together in Photoshop or whatever you use. Um, that, that might get you where you're going. And um, then the other thing, of course, is um, what someone else alluded to before is like, um, I think it was Sarah, um, I would have it either all in shade or all light, probably all in shade. And, and then if you wanted to um, add a little light to it, um, you know, through a flashlight or a flash, you could probably do that as well. Um, but but that, that might get you where you wanna go maybe. Okay. Find it interesting. It's always interesting to listen to everybody's different ideas because I like the shadows that are on it because to me it adds, well, uh, it adds like layers to it instead of just being a flat, all bright stone. I, I do too, but um, I think like Sarah was saying, you, you have both. And like, to me, I, I feel like it would probably be better if it were one or the other. I would pick the shadows personally, but um, um, but, but when you have both, you have, you have dynamic range issues. Right, so you could, I mean, it'd be interesting to take a single image into an HDR program and see what it would do with it. Mm. Yeah. And there's, I was you know, there's of, always so many options. Yeah. yeah. Uh, oh, and, and then just to be persnickety too, um, I would straighten the horizon. That's the first thing. Yes. Is that helpful, Dave? <laughs> yes, very helpful. Uh, yeah, Dave, Dave, I don't know if you can hear me or not, man. Mark here, yeah, but yeah. um um in an image like this, if you were taking the challenge of trying to turn it into something, to me, the only subject in this image is the dynamic range that's present. Uh, there's not a strong subject, as, as Bob mentioned, the, the strong subject would be the foreground, which happens to be out of focus. Um, so that really throws a lot of it out without a reshoot. But, you know, yeah, an image like this could be really cool, wide, you know, uh, the dynamic range again would be the would be the the high point. Again, the only way I would process something like this myself would be a, in an HDR process. But, um, but uh, you know, you might try that. You might find a lot of <clears throat> a lot of, a lot more interest in the scene, or find more detail or sharpness in the foreground if you I mean, were to try that and mask it. Try to. I don't know how familiar you are with Photoshop, being able to bring these in on individual layers and just masking in the detail where you want it. But that could be a beneficial, uh, you know, um, uh, exercise if nothing else, because I do see some things in focus out there. But it's mostly the blades of grass beyond the the opening, right. and you know, it looks like some of the timbers at the top that are coming down. Again, if these were leading lines, if it were, if the the angle, you don't have that approach. It looks like you don't have the ability to create to get uh, those uh, those uh, those exposed beams. 
to be leading lines for you, but anything that you can do to create leading lines in a shot like this, you have four corners of a window. Yeah, uh, you know what would, I, I don't know if it's possible given the direction, but you know what might create leading lines is a sunrise or sunset. Sure, any kind of light that you can yeah. find to do that, sure. Yeah, it would Absolutely. create directionality and draw your, draw your, um, uh, your attention in and, and then it would have the added benefit of also being brighter so it would draw your attention in. Yeah, exactly. And short of short of a reshoot, short, thank you. Short of a reshoot, the the lines are kind of going. They're not really working with you. The the, the river's kind of going with that way, and right. you know, it's uh, you're not in a really good position to uh, to find any to to really flatter any of these individual objects. That's a nice that's a nice horizon. That's a nice tree line that creates a nice juxtaposition of what of, you know, of contrast. And then you have the water and the sky, and then you have this opening. You really are in a good position. It doesn't look like it's at a good angle. Uh, I don't, I don't know that it's possible to get a really compelling shot from through that opening from this angle, but it's hard to tell from here. You would know better than us, but, but that's, um, you know, that would definitely be my, and always is my objective. Not that this, that's the point here. But uh, is to create somehow or another draw the eye, and and I know that you're probably aware of these things, and and uh, I I'm just not sure that there's much to work with in this. You don't have a lot working with you in terms of movement and angles and things like this. And again, the, the river's going away <coughs> from you. Mm -hmm. But okay. yeah, otherwise it's a very interesting. I like the, I like the fact that I like the shot. I would have taken I would have taken it too. Oops, sorry. Yeah, totally. Um, I just wanted to address something that So Pick Chu is saying in the comments. Um, so I'm I'm sort of implying that by having a sunrise or sunset that's in there, that you you're having rays coming coming out of it, and uh, or or it's a um, a a burst, and so the lines are creating the leading lines. It's not just that there's a an orange blob on the horizon. <laughs> it, right. that, if that makes sense. So yeah, that's it would have to be. Implying. It would be sunset because it's it's western. Mm. Uh, view. Uh, the nice thing for me is it's about a 15 minute drive from here, so I can certainly nice. go reshoot it. Oh, that's nice. I mean, and so that's one of the reasons that. I wanted to get ideas. I mean, I there's a part of me that says, I know there's a good picture here, but I didn't quite oh, yeah. find it this time. There's, so, yeah, there's a I good picture. Probably, there. I would spend an hour probably at this place, you know, wearing right. it out for, just, no, for just, no reason. Right. Right. Yeah, there's there's a good Different picture angles, there. And, and you, the, the window and, and structure itself is quite interesting, also. Yeah. yeah. So. That would be the challenge, trying to find a good leading. It's there somewhere. You have yeah, to, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. there. Yeah, I think so. So uh, just, just keep taking them and keep sharing them in the community yeah. so we can check your progress. Uh, <laughs> you, have a, you have a strong foreground. You have a you have a fair, you have a something that could be an interesting middle ground, and you have a you have a sky and a and some rolling hills back there that could make a strong background. So like uh, Ken was saying, on the right day in the right light at the right time with the right clouds with the right lines. I mean, it, it can all come together very nicely at this spot. I think that's pretty cool. Yeah. Are there any other windows? If there are any other windows or openings, that might be an option for you too. No, it's uh, like I said, it's built in 1950 by the Conservation Corps or something, and oh, yeah. it's, it's basically yeah. kind of fallen down. And there's a little where, bit. Where left. is this? Where is North this? Dakota. <laughs> it's North Dakota. Gotcha. Uh, just north of Bismarck. Gotcha. Okay. Very good. What what river is? What body of water is that? That's the Missouri, the Big Muddy. Oh, okay. I so, have a question. Yeah. 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 Uh, I'm real new to this, but and I'm learning how to edit. But I was wondering, should you work a little bit on the contrast in the way far away ground, like the clouds and the sky, okay. make it a little more contrasty, and maybe those trees way in the dark give them some some green or some saturation or something and sure but i do like the fact that 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 building is there but i i don't know how you could get it so it would be a little bigger and still have the same <laughs> oh oh the building in the back yeah here talking about uh, yeah Lori, this is the, this is the one i put in the dropbox for you right uh yeah okay so this this is the raw photo i I, I did an edited one. Oh. It's a little bit different, uh, but this is where I, what I started with. So I'm re <clears throat> that's really what I was interested in is, is, you know, where would other people go with Take it? it. Do, you, do you have, do you have Aurora, Dave? I do. Okay. Have you played much with, have you played with it with this image at all? 
I don't know if I did this image. I did some of the other images I took that day. I like uh, the HDR. And... Well, the reason the reason I suggested is that's why it, that's why it exists is for images like this that have a wide that have a broad okay. dynamic range. Do we um, I, do we have time? I could whip it in there really quick. Try it. If it's a raw file, it'll be great. Yeah. You'll definitely find out if your stones are really out of focus. Dave, you point... also look like you have room if you wanted to try and add someone like into that grass as like a focal point, Ooh. like Sorry. dogs and a person running or something like that too. Right. To be more, more of a subject. We'll just do right. it real quick. One point I was going to bring up real quick too is on, on the focus and, and Ken brought up a, a real good suggestion that there of doing huh. the focus stacking. The other thing too was, I think I saw that it was F5.6. So maybe go with like, a, this may be the opportunity to go with an F11 or F16 to get a little bit more focus on, you know, throughout the image. Yeah. First oh, absolutely. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. You so, really, HDR doesn't play well with uh, shallow depth of field. So yeah. That already helped. But that was just yeah, taking it in there. That's, that's like, that wasn't doing anything with it. Yeah, that's yeah. not, so, that's yeah. not even fiddling. Yeah, no, man, that's, I'm just making that's not even. That. Sorry, oh, go ahead. Yeah, sorry. Right. I'm no, I was just going to say that's not even like putting a preset on it. You know, right. that's like not messing yeah. around with anything. That's just right. default. No. That, man, the default, man, I can, tr I, I really have grown to trust the default on, you know, and again, yep. br bringing this into a layered workflow in Photoshop, being able to make, you know, to bring this in where you need it to really, to really draw the eye where you want it in those trees back there. Oh, that's much better already. Even though it does look HDR, you could play with, yeah. Right, I mean, but you, you can, yeah, yeah, mess it mess it so it's not looking. Put, a, vin, put HDR, a vignette still, on it, push it, yeah, yeah, push it in for, oh yeah, look, that's sweet. So there's stuff but, in there that I knew that wood would would be cool looking if you could just get it. Right, because then you can see that the people who scraped their knees. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> that's the story. Yep. That's the story at that right? place. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good point. That's a good point, Mark. That is a story. Yeah, whatever is the story, man, it has to be drawn out. I mean, I've, I've, I've got, I don't know how many, just like the rest of you, I don't know how many hundreds of thousands of wasted images, not really wasted, but practice images, you know, right. you know, but yeah, that's, that's all. That's awesome. There's a lot more there. That's one thing I liked about HDR is I found out that, you know, there really is more there. Okay. All right. But using, using it selectively is key. You know, being able to mask it in where you need it. That's what I've. That's what's really helped mine. Otherwise, it just obviously looks HDR'd and yeah. All that. But see that right there looks. That still looks pretty. I mean, or what you had before it looked fairly natural. I mean, there were a couple of overbaked ones. Right. That's just that's just yeah, what yeah. You, when you first take it into Aurora, yeah. it automatically yes. does. I agree. Whatever. Yeah, that's pretty good. Yeah. It, yeah, I mean, you remember when HDR programs, when they first started, their their default would be just really garish. Oh, it was no, awful. right. <laughs> yeah, so so uh, I'm impressed that that's what they come up with for a yeah. default. Yeah, yeah, me too. The, the the default, what the right out of the first, what it comes up with before I even start being right before you yeah. even play with it, it is outstanding. Yeah. Now. yeah, outstanding. Are you good with all that, David? Oh yeah, yeah. That's all right. exactly what I was hoping to get. Cool. cool. Good Move now. on to Shelly. Shelly's uh -oh. on the on here too, right? Somebody's in trouble. I accidentally I'm roll here. over my my I, it <clears throat> my Lightroom. All I have to do is roll over something, then it saves it. Oh, that looks it doesn't, good. It doesn't save it, but it doesn't like I can't control Z and get out of it. Oh, it how just it just keeps the whatever oh. I rolled over on there. It's weird. Okay. So Shelly actually sent these three images. Huh, okay. Do you want to tell us about them, Shelly? Or you know, you were you were you were concerned about the shadows in the face shadows. or something? Yes, this is my cousin, and she wanted some uh, shots to use on her on a dating site. Okay. Um, she's a young woman, and I, I have always liked this kind of French flirty kind of look. And she's so I dressed her up and did the best I could, but her skin in all of these looks washed out. And these are the best um, that I got exposure wise. And I'm not sure how to approach something like this, I guess. I, I was in, um, these were JPEGs and the uh, one in the red and the one, one of her reading the book those are, I uh, realized I wasn't using raw. 
Okay. But have you I, have you tried a white balance adjustment just on something gray? I have, and it looks even worse. And maybe I just need to play with it a, a little more. And like then the, gray, I the gray maybe down at near her feet over on the planter box. Right. Right. Perhaps. Okay. <clears throat> Interesting. I don't know. I did the darker version, the darker gray to the left of that one. But yeah. I don't know. Okay. Okay. I don't know. That's tough. Yeah. I don't know anybody else. I, I, I'm, that's it's uh, out of my, know. it's out of my realm of what I do. The table, the tabletop would be mine, would be my first, you know? Yeah. I mean, it's warm. Huh? But I think oh. she was washed out there. Don't you agree? I well, do. I do. Yeah, there's too much, there's too much competing with her face. It's I kind mean, of flat. Yeah. I would right. Too, right. Well, I think, much, yeah, sorry. Good. Issue. I mean, th this is not my area of expertise either because I rarely do this, but um, it seems to me that like if you had put some light on her face or a reflection or something like that, and then used a faster shutter speed or something so that the background was darker and she were brighter, you would probably get more because it, like I see what you're saying, you know, her shoulder, particularly her sh left right. shoulder well, is-, is Well, um, the, I think, yeah, I think the washout is coming from it's a shallow depth of field, but it's a very yeah, yeah. bright day without an ND filter that 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 can't i don't think you could get a sharp yeah. shot like i would i would put i mean if i had to use this pose um or or this background rather um i would i would use a fast shutter speed and put a lot of light on her face uh, so that way i'm exposing for the face and everything else is darker uh or technical okay. okay yeah that's a, that's the great okay. point and her face should be brighter than the background and that's not the case that's right yeah that's that's what i would do um, yeah. So I don't know that there's anything that you can do. Maybe you can do some Photoshop magic or something. Sure, I mean, like creatively, it's up to the individual, whatever they want. Yeah, I mean, you, you know, could even do something in Lightroom and, and you know, by... Sure. Right. Yeah. yeah. But but initially, that would that would be my suggestion. I don't know how comfortable you are in, in Photoshop, but I, I put up an article recently where I gave away four free presets that are, you know, one of them is called Portrait Lift, and it makes a circle like this right on the face. Uh -huh. So you, you can draw the gradient on the face and it's, uh, it'll brighten that area. And it's for that reason, just to, just to try to make the face brighter. Whatever you did just there, that, that already helped. I feel right. Sure. I, just, yeah, I, just put a, I just put a, um, yep. you know, did that. Okay. No, you did. You did. You have, that was awesome. Yeah. That I, was you great. have I, luminar? I invert, I did no, no, light room. Right. I just, do you, got, I do just you have, go ahead. Um, just checking. Do you have Luminar? No, oh yeah, good question. Luminar, Luminar has some tools in there that are now specifically for portrait. Yeah. And within the loom, within that portrait neighborhood, it has the face light that Mark's talking about. It has um, you can uh, enhance the eyes individual, and it's really quick. It's pretty amazing yeah. stuff. It's outstanding. Yeah. AI. It's, You're talking about AI, right? Uh, AI. Yeah. yeah. Here, yeah, I'll that, open it. I'll open that it. That works really well. I mean, like I said, I never it's even do kind of photography. And it's, it's pretty really strong. It's and then the other part when you're when you're making a portrait, or that's that you want it to be a little bit more dynamic. Instead of such flat light, if you can either hold light back from one side or add light to the other, Absolutely. you add more shape, form, and dimension. This is already starting to go go more better. Um, go to um, edit, and then down the very bottom. Already and you go face light. Right, that's where I'm at. So just right. just moving the face yeah, light. I'm gonna do extreme, yeah. but yeah, you know, yeah, so you can see. Okay. But that way you can see what okay. it does, right? So yep. you can right, see right. the difference. Yeah. If I push it all the way to the right, you can see. But obviously, you're not gonna put it at a hundred. But um, even just moving it a little bit, you know. Well, um, I mean, uh, the, one of the first things I would do, Shelly, is uh, is is crop in on that thing. She needs to be closer. She's um, way yeah. too far away. There is that. And if you are going to do a shot like this, like where you're showing all of her, I would not cut off the feet. Well, I, I agree with that. I absolutely agree with that. Yeah, come in on her, come in on her even more. And again, you know, I don't really need to see any of that stuff myself. I'm really interested in the in the shoulders, maybe hip and shoulders and above possibly. I don't know, the hand is interesting. Just above the elbow. <laughs> But yeah, just but as long as I get that, as long as I get the face, man, and it's in a third point, you know, or something, otherwise it drives me crazy. Yeah. <laughs> You've got to remember that Shelly said that this is for a dating site. Right. They get those eyes in the third point. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, but then the so chair's in the way. So, yeah, so if you can lower it, lower it down a little bit, Laurie. Yeah, Laurie. I, yeah. I'm on, uh, I'm you on. need more 
up a torso to show on a dating site. There you go. That's, that's, cool. looking, that's that looks yeah. great. But go lower. Yeah. That's go I'm lower. I'm saying when there. I said the elbow, it's the other the eyes elbow the that's on the yeah, front. Yeah, perfect. Eyes okay, okay. I think now there you go. Yeah, beautiful. that's now that's you're cooking. Good. Yeah, that's it's good. beautiful. And like the, the shoulder, the left shoulder that was bad. Looks, looks better. <laughs> oh, a vignette. Put a vignette on it. Yeah, a little vignette. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It, yeah, I feel like we're getting somewhere because it's like a done. Yes. Now, now yeah. she's intimate nice and looking at you as That's opposed beautiful. to the environment. Yes. Maybe yeah. a high pass. Maybe a high pass. Sharpen on the eyes, and I'm done. Okay. You can oh, bring the I mean, lips it, up a little. Yeah, it's it's something. I mean, again, lips I don't. That tool is portraits nice. aren't my thing, but you know, it, it just takes. Yeah, you can't do little, hair, but little yeah, that's twits. Sweet. Little, yeah. little right. tweaks that do, if, do it. If, if I'm single, I'm already thinking about ringing her up. <laughs> <laughs> and and this Good is your job, and, and and somebody mentioned earlier, and and the, the adjustments that Lori made there are fantastic with the luminar and that. But I think Agreed. somebody mentioned earlier in that using like a reflector on the initial yeah. shot where you have some yeah. light that's key. In the face. Yes. Here, here, yeah. We, yeah. here you created it. Made but a if big you got that yeah. in camera, yeah, yeah. If you got that light in camera. I mean, this this looks wonderful. Right. Yeah. You got that light in camera, and then you yeah. don't even need that benefit out of what you did with the luminar. Absolutely. Start with framing. If you don't like the framing, don't even waste your time. If you don't have a good framing like this, if you're not flattering, if you're not, if you don't don't even waste the time. Get the framing. You know, this is a good flattering look at this person. Mm -hmm. Yeah. In my okay. opinion, yeah. if, if I'm shooting a portrait. Right. And again, I don't know what dating, I don't know, I'm 50, I don't know what dating sites <laughs> I'm looking for, but, you know, I feel sorry for all of them if they're having to do this, that's all I can say, <laughs> but, you know, pretty lady, what can you well, say? And I like people's faces, and one, that's a, one of the areas of my photography I like to develop is the portrait area. Well, you get, you know, oh. you get a shot like this, and you get the, you get the framing in right, now you, now it's ready for luminar. And it can really see now once you get yeah. it up and close and it can really see, it can start to get the neural features. Like, I don't know if you use Photoshop, but they're the, the neural feed, the, the neural masking is outstanding. Mm. You know what I'm and talking you, about? You guys no. familiar with all the, with no. the neural features? I've played well, that's around. Brand it, new it's the same yeah, as it's, Luminar. It's like it's brand, same, yeah. yeah, it's, it's brand new. They're, it's they're not quite. They're not quite ready for prime time, though, Mark. For no, they're you not. Know, unless, unless, unless you live in Photoshop. So I would, I would lean toward the Luminar because Luminar then Chavis. once you're at, when you're at this spot, now you can, um, you can redden the lips. You and again, it's, it's sliders and it's a WYSIWYG. What you yeah, see is I, what I don't, you get. I personally don't use those, those neural filters. I use Luminar, so I'm with you 100. Yeah. percent I, I mean. When I'm maybe when I have a quick image that I'm just I'm trying to make a thumbnail or something for YouTube, I'll run it into Luminar really quick and bam, I'm always amazed at yeah. how much better it looks. Quick. I'm like, my gosh, I, it's amazing how good it's getting. This, Perfectly this clear looks, actually does a pretty good job on portraits too for for someone who's not a portrait photographer. Yes, it does. Who's used perfectly clear because I was yeah. like, wow, look at this. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. Think, oh yeah. Well, hopefully that was helpful, Shelly. That was oh, very that, all good. Job. Just for all fun, good. can you, can you show the you. picture where she's like uh, reading a book again? Oh yeah, I forgot about her legs. Now this Shelley. is the dating site. So look at the book we found just in a bin outside of a used <laughs> book. <laughs> but the only, okay. the, but but to me, the story about this image is about the book. It isn't about yeah. her. Like, I, I don't, she's, I don't she's not that. in focus and the book is I, in focus right so. i don't know that i was just going to say something about this like i don't know that this like i you know i would put this on a dating site I, but but i just want to <laughs> say that like the pose like how she looks is really relaxed it just looks kind of natural and then and then that she's wearing red kind of pops too so i i wanted to point out that there's some some rather nice elements in here okay. yep. thank so, you absolutely yeah. And it, at f 2.0 it's a pretty shallow depth of field maybe you don't mm. quite have to go that far True. and yeah, maybe okay. the, the iso of 400 you may not have to push it that high it looks like you've got some room to play with on the shutter yeah. screen, so. what body yeah. what body did you shoot this on shelly i have a nikon d7500 okay so you show this is a this is an iso 400 you say yes right. Okay, that's not bad. Gonna yeah. avoid her, if you can avoid her tucking her chin back, her head will look a lot nicer. Yeah, it so, just looks like it needs some curb adjustment, okay. man. You know, okay. just 
just needs some contrast. It needs, you know, the shadows need to be dipped right. a little, the brights need to be popped a little, and it needs to be cropped up from the bottom so that book and her hands are in the lower third. Yeah, I just wanted, I, I don't know, I just thought like the color and some of the approaches like has merit. I agree. Those yeah. are, the colors are actually very appropriate for what yeah. it is. I don't know. I just, there was, I just remember like when, when this flashed by last time, there was something, you know, kind of appealing about this photo. So. Thank you. Yeah. That's right. very helpful. Very helpful. Thank you. Oh, sure. Uh, is Paul still here? I'm here. All right, wow. Paul. Well, all right. Wow. Wow. So can you just give us an idea or what, what you sent this to us for? What are you looking well, for? Well, uh, yeah, obviously it's low light. And uh, I wanted to be able to capture, you know, with good enough focus, uh, you know, the textures on the rocks. Right. And uh, the depth of field, uh, you know, the with such low light, you have to open up your aperture a certain amount and you lose the depth of field. Uh, and then there gets to be a problem. I'd like, if I could zoom in on the, the couple that's on the top of the outcropping, uh, it's, it's quite blurry actually, because uh, I had to slow the shutter speed down. So, uh, you know, that if I did want to crop that and just get, uh, you know, that uh, it, it's not focused well because they move, they're moving a bit. Mm. And, so did you, uh, do you know them? Do you know them? No. The, okay, yeah, so you, know. okay. Cause they they're, I mean, they're kind of just, the, oh, okay. After Cause I'm like, if, if it was supposed to be about them, they're not oh. posed, they're not like standing kind of, is it, you know, know just nice kind of hanging out. They, yeah. I apologize for photobombing my picture, but <laughs> I had to tell them, no, it really added to it. Right. And, I would have uh, waited until they got off the rock. <laughs> yeah. I mean, uh, that's that's me, but I don't yeah. like people in my shots. So oh, I don't, I don't <laughs> but, uh, mind like I say, uh, to be able to capture a, enough depth of field so that you could really get the textures and the rocks in the foreground. Is this the full shot? Can we zoom out all the way? That's that's it. That's, okay, full, that's, full that's all I got. Okay, that's so, it. That's it. Wow. Okay. Yeah, I would have um, like focused on. <laughs> I would have focused on them because they're the focal point. They're yeah. The matter essentially. Well, well think, you know. Happen, Things happen quickly and I had it set up and then, you know, next thing I know the picture, uh, but I was thinking, you know, afterwards I could crop it afterwards, but when you crop it and just get them, it's not a clear picture of them. All right. Well, that's well you would want to crop me. in camera. Yeah. You know, if, if you're taking a picture of them, you would really want to zoom in quite a bit. Yeah. yeah. Or, and or, and, you, or and that would make a big difference right there. Um, but you know, it I, I seems would, to me, it seems to me, Paul, that you were trying to capture a landscape here, and you know, I was, yes. Well, yeah, and and so what I'm see, first of all, the first thing that I'm seeing is that this scene should be really warm, not cool. Right. And no, so I didn't... The, the the sky is warm. I can tell it's warm, but this foreground, and this is the problem with single image uh, HDR processing or any kind of processing, is that when you process for the sky and you bring the foreground, try to bring the foreground up, which this scene would normally be silhouetted and those people would be silhouetted. And that to me would make this shot a lot more interesting, yeah. especially if I did not know them. To, the, because naturally this scene would be silhouetted to our eyes. We wouldn't see any of this detail. Yeah. And so this is the problem when people with, with crispy HDR that people don't like is that they pull it up too far. The shadows, it's so tempting to bring the shadows up really far. And when you do, they're usually very cool. And right. so here they are, very cool. So if you were to bring this into Photoshop and warm up this foreground with a mask, warm it up, or yeah. just bring a gradient mask up the whole bottom from the top to cool, to warm up that foreground to match the background, because it doesn't match the background. They're unrealistic. That's the only issue that I have with this, is that it's up too far. I would push the foreground back a little bit and let the shadows be there. Ah, there we but, go but not all the way. Yes. Now we're talking a more realistic yeah. looking yeah, scene. Yeah. No, I, I completely agree. That, that was like another thought I had too, like that, that I was going to bring up if you hadn't, because the temperature's that looks, off. Yeah. That looks way better. Those are great points you brought up, Mark, because I'm a hundred percent guilty of doing exactly what you said. <laughs> well, there's so a lady, in, there's a lady in our town I, that does. Yeah. Yeah. There's a lady in our town that does this. She takes, she is prolific. She's out every day. She's killing it. She's taking spectacular shots. And in every single one of them, she's doing a single image HDR to get the sky and to get that sky, she ends up pulling the, 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 the shadows up and they're cool. 
if she would if she would just open it up in Photoshop and bring these things up and, and warm the foreground up to match to match the sky. Now we're talking and now it looks a little better, even though it still is HDR. -y, it still looks right. Uh, yeah. And so now, yeah, that looks great. Whatever you did, it looks awesome. It looks a lot better. You know, one of the things about the HDR is that uh, if I actually use HDR in uh, Lightroom and then take that over to Photoshop, there's like a ghost that's around everything. Well, you, you, you need to get Aurora HDR, Paul. Yeah. I, I can't suggest that to you enough. It, it oh. just takes all of the headache out of HDR. Oh, you're talking about halos. Halos, yeah. I mean, like everything is like a right. Great halo around. Right. Yeah. You know, HDR software is notorious for that, and it's hard to it's hard to combat that. But Aurora is is I mean, I, I'm a, a longtime Photomatics user. Yeah. And um, um, I actually have a good relationship with these guys, and I love using their products. And I still and they have their place, but but Aurora does too. And there's no haloing with Aurora. Very little to no haloing at all, right out of the box. So you'll you, I think you'll like that, and that looks great too. Whatever you're doing, Laurie, you're killing it. I didn't, all I did was put a um, graduated filter here. Right, uh, graduated, perfect, right? perfect. I brought I have, down, the, I increased the temperature. What would happen? A little bit, and then I brought down the you, shadows and blacks a little bit. Oh, sorry, sorry, I, did, I thought you were done. Nope. Okay, so what would happen if you cropped a little bit on the right, just to bring, bring the third on? To the people. I lost you. Oh, I see. Interesting. Yeah, I see this and I want to see the horizon line on like a third. So either getting yeah, the yeah, yeah, yeah. really low okay. or I, I like I like the I like that because the foreground is more of a subject, not than the sky. Yeah. The, the leading lines are in the ground. Yeah. Okay. So something like that. I feel so. Part of the reason was because, you know, the rule of thirds so frequently works. But the other reason to me is that uh, as a landscape shot, the cool stuff is on the left side. We don't need quite as much of uh, on the right side. Uh, uh, and so that that was part of the motivation to see, you know, just uh, what does that look like? So to me, that helps a little bit. Yeah. Sure. Yep, yep, yep. That's where you'd love to get your wide angle out and just get low. And really yeah. bring that ground, bring yeah, the ground into uh, people's, bring it into their lap, man. Make them feel <laughs> like they're really there. Well, it was still a distance away with 70 millimeter lens, so. Oh, that's a that's that's good. That's a good framing for a 70 mil, but, man, I think. Yeah. See, that's a pretty good photo now. Yeah. I mean, that was just like a, a few little tweaks. Yeah, I would still I would still push the foreground back a little bit because it's naturally not, it's not going to be that bright to our eye. It's still pushed, yeah. it's still cranked. Now I could take that into Photoshop and I could uh, you know, do some masks where I actually just take the sky and, and then exclude the sky and mask everything in front of it. Sure. And, uh, and, put, it, and put a sort of a colored, colored mask with a very low opacity. Yeah, 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 yeah. That looks great, Lori. <laughs> uh, yeah, there we this go. This is like, I'm learning stuff because I never do most of this <laughs> stuff. <laughs> I'm like a quick, I'm like, no, oh, that's good enough. Yeah. yeah just, yeah, adjustment, brought a couple of hits with the adjustment brush and on the rock. Is but it, it totally changes where your eye goes. Yes. I, that, I, that draws the eye, man. Those people. That, that 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 leading, yeah, the, there's a little bit of a leading line with a light that's coming right up in through from well, all yep, these, right, yeah. right. All these light yep, areas yep, too yep, bring yep. you in. Exactly. The, silhouette those people, those people. Silhouette those people. On yeah. the left. Would Here, anybody remove those two people on the left? No, nah, man, that's fine. People add, add life adds interest to a photograph, um, man. Okay. The thing is, uh, don't listen to Lori. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Lori doesn't like people. <laughs> then why are you doing this? <laughs> I'm. Uh, it's my job. <laughs> <laughs> wow. It's actually good. No, I like I said, I learn a lot from these things myself because I don't do a lot of this stuff. I know? can't get everything I wanted, but one of the things that the location is. Uh, the rockets, rocks themselves have unbelievable, how should I say, uh, texture and interest to them. They do. They do. They Get do. Closer to them. Then, yeah, take take micro, take like take through the, small the landscapes, right? Do you so, have Do you have a wide angle details. lens? Paul? Yeah, I've got a wide angle prime, and yeah, uh, 
get get low and let it distort. That's the type of thing. That's a that's a scene I like to distort all day. Yeah, exactly. Right. Yeah, all right. that's awesome. Uh, very good, I have Paul. A with this, yeah, that's yeah. good. I just like yeah. I say, uh, couldn't get everything I wanted with it. And if I do try to crop it with the people on the top, they're not in focus. For one thing, the shutter speed was so slow that they're moving a little bit. Oh. That's a, they should be they should be silhouetted anyway, Paul. Frankly, yeah. that the, the sky is the subject in that scene, um, where they are. In my opinion, if I'm shooting that shot and if I see that, the people are there. I want them to be silhouetted. I know that they're not going to be. I want some detail. You're going to pull some some high, nuances out. You're going to pull some of that out, but not that much. I mean, they, we're not going to be seeing that much. Yeah, yeah. Push them back, and you know, let hints of wow. <laughs> I just did it. Oh, like okay. <laughs> um, because it's on it, my screen. On my screen, I can see that there, it looks like there's a sketch on the uh, sky. No, that's oh, a, that's a, a, a contrail from a plane that maybe I, I could use content to be what the content or where. Oh, that's a, just, a, yeah, yeah, it's just yeah. A, it's just a. It's that's just a spot. A, that's a spot a, removal right there. Easy. Yeah. Yeah, if you wanted to get rid there of you that. Go. Yeah. yeah. Just like that. Yep. How, 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 what, how <laughs> Paul's, that Paul's going, how did you do that? Well, I, yeah. I, I, I know. Oh, no, it's spot do. removal. It's spot rem the spot removal tool in Lightroom. So if you go up here, yeah. or it, I always, I use the shortcut key. It's a Q. If you hit Q, it brings up the spot removal. Okay. But up here, this, it's this. this is in, uh, I, I do Lightroom. everything. In, this is in Lightroom. I, yeah, it's I do everything. This symbol right here. <laughs> so if you yeah. do, or you can do that too. It depends on it. I vary yeah. with what I do, be, be, depending on what it is and the image. Oh no, I think it's some great. of it's, I, I, it. depends on what Lightroom. it is, but if it's just a quick thing like that, it does it good with, enough. With that in one it worked well in Lightroom, but a lot of times, Photoshop sometimes, looks right? Like, yeah, looks better job. Yeah, it does but better. In this case, you you hit it. You nailed yeah, it. Yeah, that's and I mean, we're just doing it, you know, to show without the thing too. So oh, it's absolutely. not like we're gonna print this huge or anything. So uh, no, I'm. I, I wish I knew Lightroom as well as you did. <laughs> I don't use Photoshop, so. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, I use Bridge. I go from Bridge to Photoshop, and in Bridge, you have ACR, Adobe Camera Raw, which is the same thing as we're right. doing right here. Right. So it's a matter of right. what you're used to. I mean, I like a, I like a file structure. I have my, my files in a folder with a date, with names next to them. I don't like to work in a catalog workflow. Right. I like to work in a folder-based workflow that my Bridge you know window likes i mean if you guys aren't used to that bridge is the same thing as your windows explorer or your finder on mac or whatever it's just a, it's it has all the codecs for all the for everything uh when i when i worked in engineering i used bridge in engineering because it would show me all of the models all of the autodesk revit models that i needed for the architecture and engineering projects i was working on and so it, it would even show me that stuff. So I use bridge for all kinds of stuff outside of photography because the codecs are just that intelligent, but it's, uh, it's outstanding. I mean, it, to me, it's Oops, a really sorry. smooth, uh, to, it's a really smooth workflow, but I always go to Photoshop. Like, uh, like Ken was saying, I mean, I always end up in Photoshop. Um, so. Uh, all right. So we have yeah. one more image. If you guys are good for staying on the call for a few more minutes, sure. if not, yeah. we'll, we'll, <clears throat> this is Michael's. Okay, and, and yeah, I, I was gonna say you didn't have to to, to, to run my. Oh, I know that's why, uh, but you know, we're, it's we're here and you. So, so I'll, I'll explain a real quickly here what I was doing. This was just this last weekend uh, coming back. This is up out of. I live in Colorado. It was up in the mountains. This is near, uh, close to Aspen. It's in Basalt, Colorado, and it's the Frying Pan River. And I was kind of looking, trying to find a scene up there. This last weekend, it was really smoky. There's some wildfires out in the <laughs> west and that, so the mountain scenes weren't that great. So I tried to get something along along the river here. And so if, if, if there's some suggestions that anybody might have with regards to, am I, I, I tried to make sure I didn't blow out the highlights and I didn't down on the water, but is it too bright down there relative to the rest of the scene? And the other part of it would be, is there a better crop that works? Then, you know, it, do I have too much up on top? Should I take some of that down? But those were just some of the things that were sort of going through my mind on this one. Depends on what story you want to tell. That's always, that's your first question is what's the star of the show? Is it the water? Right. 
Is it the trees? Is it the fact that the water is running through? You know, the, you, you always want to start with the idea rather than just going, oh, that looks cool. Ink. And we right. all we all are guilty of that. Yes, we do that on a regular basis. That's our that's that's the uh, the go the, the default mode for when we shoot. The idea is if you go out with a purpose or once you look at a scene, stop for a minute and say, yep. OK, what is it that I like about this? that's making me stay stop here and make this photograph. Once you start doing that, it's amazing how much your images will take a whole nother level forward. Um, and I, what I do is if, even if I'm going out just to shoot for, you know, for giggles, I will give myself an assignment of some sort. Uh, today I'm photographing rocks or the color red or the color green or trees, whatever it is, and that's what I'm going to focus on. But what's weird enough, I come back with much better photos of all sorts of things, not just the thing. I'm, it kind of starts your concentration. So right. that's a that's, that's, a, that's a great, from... great point, Bob. And, you know, about back in like 20, 2010 or something like that, uh, you guys, uh, some of these guys here might know who Chris Orwig is. He's a, you know, he's a photography educator. He wrote a he wrote an article called The Five Minute Walk. You guys might remember this, I don't know, or you might know it through another avenue, but he spends any, like, even when he just went to the laundromat, you know, he would spend five minutes trying to tell the story with his camera, yeah, regardless of what it was. And even if you're just at a parking lot, and I did found myself, I live in Virginia, I found myself at a Parkway Overlook, just like going, hmm, you know, what, what, what do I, how do I tell the story at this parking lot? I don't know. It just it, it, it becomes challenging like that, but it, it, it really made me think. And so, um, um, you know, a situation like this, you're looking at the you, you have an outstanding scene here, man. I mean, this is like, yeah, this is a really cool looking shot. All right. Um, to me, the water is the subject yeah. and it's too it's too low. Yes. <laughs> you know, it's it's obviously way too low. Um a, 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 to me, a strong landscape image has to have a strong foreground or at least a discernible foreground object, sure. yeah. whether it's a blade of grass, a pebble, it could be anything, a certain flower placed on the third point or wherever you want to place it, you know, but there has to be something in the foreground and then there has to be something in the background and then, and then of course, you know, a mid ground doesn't have to happen that way. Yep. Yeah. But you definitely need, need to have a strong foreground object. There has to be a discernible subject. And the, 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 to me, the subject would be the water. The other stuff would be gravy. Um, but that's just my opinion on this shot. You have it. You're, you're, you're like so close to an outstanding situation right. right there. If you just were a little bit lower to the ground, I think you would have found and, you know, found your, your scene really open up even more for you. Um, a lot of people don't do that. They stay at eye level with their cameras. Not that the, not that you do this, but yep. you have to move. You, if you want your image to look different, you have to move your body and move your hands, move the camera, get it low, get it high, move it somewhere away from your eyes. Get it wet. But yeah, <laughs> yes. right, right. Yeah, I, you know, I've got tripods that I ruin all the time. You know, that that go floating down. You know, so yeah, I mean, it's. I mean, but I spent a lot of time shooting in creeks and, and water. That was where I learned to really love photography, and to also realize that there's not much of a market for it. And if I really want to get into photography as a business, then I need to really, you know, go beyond the, go beyond this and and uh, learn how to shoot people again. You know that that's where you know. Most of the people that are going to pay you for photography or you need people in them, you know, so people in the shot. So that's a whole nother beast. And, but this is where I love to be. This is my favorite place to be. I see this shot and I feel at home here, you know, this is great. So I don't know. That's a, that is a good shot. I mean, you have so much top glare. It looks like you're in full <laughs> sun. Uh, you know, are you in full sun? No, I, and, and it was about like 11 in the morning and that's so oh, the sun bad. was up pretty high. So it, it, it's, it's pretty hot. You know, I mean, there, no, there's yeah, probably yeah. a better, there, there's a better time of day to shoot this for sure. The, um, um and, and, and you're right. I, you know, there is not a strong 
before ground, it immediately goes to mid ground and goes to the back. And but you know, now that you're talking about it, as I'm looking at it, there there is light here. I mean, uh, you know, Laurie, if you if you take the, if you drop if you play with the mid tones and the curves on this thing and, and separate, you know, and kind of get rid of that hazy middle section through there, I mean, there's probably some good striking light in this thing. Hit the dehaze filter, or and it'd be, it might be another one for Aurora. Again, it kills me how how it actually helps it, I, you know, or it, even or even Luminar's automatic luminosity. thing. I mean, it, or, or or even like maybe using a little bit of luminosity masking. And, I think and Mark's looking yeah. for a job in Skylum. In in shooting in shooting, um, yes, you might perhaps. if you if you don't if you don't have a um, polarizing filter in your bag, that might be something you want to think about yeah, to be good, able to con point. and when you get it. It's not too often that you uh, use one anymore, but this would be the exact situation to yes. control how many highlights are going to sneak through. That's a good, so that's you a can good just, point. You and, can and, really... and I did have a polarizing filter that was back up in the car that I probably should have walked out. Oh, yeah, yeah I, I know that back up in the car so, thing. So, so sometimes <laughs> I do that. But the, um, and, and, I, and I do have some other <laughs> ones that I took uh, horizontally that did have a little bit more, I'll say, maybe not foreground, but a little bit closer ground anyways, of some yeah. of the bushes and trees that are a little bit closer to me. Mm -hmm. So I, I do have some other ones in my, you know, from this very same spot that might be better candidates. candidates. Really, really have a hero. If you're going to shoot a landscape, have a hero in there, whether it's in the foreground or the background yeah. or the mid ground, have something in mind that is really the, the object, you know, yeah. that's the one thing that, that I learned that I took away from the five minute walk thing was to, you know, um, to be able to uh, try to make a subject out of anything. I don't know, out of just a parking place, out of the stripe or the lines on a parking place, whatever, you know. It can be done. It yep, can be yep. done. It yep. can be done, yeah. Yeah, I, I would agree. Maybe, I would maybe next time I hit this spot, there'll be a trout that jumps up right at the right time. Right? <laughs> I would, I would just bring a rubber one and throw it out there. <laughs> just, just, just grass from the foreground, something from the foreground. Yes, I would Photoshop Sasquatch into there. Or even if you could, if you could, if you, I don't even know if you can walk closer and, and put this rock right in the. Oh yeah, now we're talking. Um, yeah. I, and, and I love that rock. Talking. I love the way the water goes around it and stuff. It'd be a cool. Yeah. My, yeah, my, fly fishing, my, my fly fishing waders were back up in the car. Too. Ah. So next time I will put those on, I will get out and I will um, get man, I need to come back. to Colorado, man. There you go. I, I will yeah. be out in the river and there you uh, go. get a different scene. But no, I awesome. really appreciate awesome. the, the comments are real helpful because I, I, I know there's something else I can do. In this oh, it's a great shot. It's a great shot. All of these were great shots. Yeah. Yeah. This has been yeah. great. I hope everybody um, found something that they could get out of it. I, I know I did. Um, even just doing what I do when, when people suggest stuff, I'm like, wait, I don't, okay, I can do that, <laughs> you know, because it's not always how I process my own images either. So I, I love this. Always, I hate, always I hate information. Looking, I hate looking at my own photography. This right. <laughs> All right. I think that's it for today. Then if anybody has any other questions, just pop in real quick. Otherwise I'm going to call it a night. Nice right. to see everybody. Thank you guys. Thank you. Thanks so much Thanks for all the comments. Thank you. Thank yeah, you. Laura, appreciate all the help. Thank, Thank you. you guys. Yeah, yep. Take care. Good night, guys. Bye. There was uh, Charlie. If 